God is love. What did I say just now? You can never see in the Bible God is faith. You can never find in the Bible God is hope. Verse 13 of that passage where I said, And now abide that faith, hope, charity. These three, the greatest is charity, which is love. You never find God is faith, God is hope, but you find God is love. So there is a mystery behind love that we need to understand very clearly. There is something much more powerful than faith. You say, eh? You see there is something? You mean there is something more powerful than faith? Because if you read the Bible, you find thy faith had made thee whole. Then you say, thy love had made thee whole. That woman with the issue of blood, Jesus said, thy faith had made thee whole. He didn't say thy love had made thee whole. So if you look at the power of faith to make whole, you wonder how can somebody be greater than faith? Yet love is more powerful. The almighty God, the Bible says, God is love. And that love is the greatest thing actually in our world. That love has a patent healing power, both for mental and physical illness. There's an expression in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 2 here. That should shake anyone to his foundation or foundation. Verse 2. Say, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am what? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is a terrible word to apply to a human being. I mean, you look at somebody and say, You are nothing. Nothing means not anything. It means not at all. It means opposite of something. It means it's of no account, of no value. It's non-existence. Are you here tonight and you are Mr. and Mrs. Nothing? Well, you may say, no, I'm not one of them, but a person without the Bible love is called Mr. and Mrs. Nothing. Surely, if you find a man who can speak English, French, German, Spanish, Swahili, Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo, Greek. Certainly you call the person somebody. Surely if you find a man who can talk to birds, who can talk to trees, who can talk to inhabitants that are beyond this world, even angels, you will say, ah, this is somebody now. That kind of person who talks to trees, to angels, to demons, he will be regarded as somebody, his phone will ring forever. And he will be very, very rich. A man with complete knowledge of all future events, he knows everything. He will be regarded as somebody. Surely, if I know all mysteries, and I can answer all the questions the scientists, the philosophers want to ask, even if they don't call me somebody, I'll call myself something. Supposing I memorize the whole of the Bible and every encyclopedia in the world, and I know everything in the dictionary, even if they say I'm nobody, I will say I'm something. If I had faith to eliminate all impossibilities, and every country is asking me to come and preach, come and preach, come and preach. If I dish out millions and millions of naira to the poor every week, if I can speak in tongues for 20 hours, prophesy for two days, I understand all the mysteries, I have knowledge, I have faith, I give arms to the poor. The Bible says I could have all these things and still be nothing. You can speak in tongues and be nothing. You can prophesy without love. You can have deep knowledge without love. You can have faith without love. You can have hospitality, generosity without love. You can sacrifice many things without love. You can engage in all kinds of spiritual activities without love. You could even suffer persecution of, because of Christ and die as a martyr like civil without love. If you have no love, the Bible says you are nothing. Let me now go to some hard facts about the ministry of love. Number one, the lack of love is one of the world's greatest sins. It's one of the world's greatest sins. And it has caused a lot of trouble. Two, true brotherly love is actually a form of insanity. Because 
the kind of love does not make sense to people. How could Jesus decide to die for people who are even abusing him on the cross? It doesn't make sense. It's insanity in one form or the other. Three, faults are very, very fat. Finding fault become very fat only when love is very thin. When there is thin love, then you find very fat fault finding. Four, those who have the true love of God are the closest to heaven. These are hard facts about love, which I wanted to note. Five, love never asks how much must I do, but how much can I do. Not how much must I do, but how much can I do. Six, money can build a house, but it takes love to make a home. You could have a house without a home. Seven, the most lonely place in this world is the human heart where love is absent. The most lonely place in the world is the human heart where there is no love. Talking about hard facts about love. Eight, the world will be a better place when the power of love replaces the love of power. The world will be a better place when the power of love replaces the love of power. Plenty of people want power but not love. Now, nah. love, the true love of Christ is the fire of life. The fire of life. Without it really there is no life. Ten. Love is more than a characteristic of God. It is his character. That is, God is love. These are hard facts about love. Eleven. Love is the key to the universe which unlocks all doors. It unlocks all doors. No matter how tight the door is, the power of love will force it open. Twelve. Love is the only service that power cannot command and money cannot buy. Because I command you to love this. No, it's not possible. Love is that only service. Power cannot command it. Money cannot buy it. These are powerful sayings, hard facts about love. And I want you to bear this in mind. Because these are things that the enemy wants to hide behind this year to cheat so many people. 13. Tell me what you love and I will tell you what you are. What you love decides the kind of person you are. Tell me what you love. And I will tell you what you are. 14. True love is willing to help people even if it hurts them. It hurts, but you go ahead and do it. How many things have I told you now? How many? 14 now. The measure of our love is the measure of our sacrifice. The measure of your love is the measure of your sacrifice. But I say, I love God, I love Jesus. What you sacrifice is what will make us know whether what you are saying is true or not. These are facts you should note very well. Love defies definition, but it can be expressed. And the Bible, in its own way, technically begins to tell us what it is. Let's look straight into 1 Corinthians 13 again. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. He said, Charity suffered long. Let somebody say that loud and clear. Let me hear the sister shouting it. And brothers. That means the first characteristic of love that the Bible points out is patience. Love is patient. It endures long. It's never tired of waiting. And love waits without murmuring. Love never gives up. Love is able to suffer. This is the first major characteristic. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. 
I'm tired of this marriage. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of this. Because there is no love. Patience is the most outstanding quality of love. That's why any love that is able to turn to hatred overnight is not love. True love will go through fire, sorrow and trouble for you. True love will endure suffering and yet remains sweet and kind. Impatience against someone is evidence that there is no love. So love will learn to wait. I agree that there are so many people who are difficult to live with. But when love is in our heart, we are patient with those who make life hard for us. Love is patient. These days, the enemy is waging war against marriages. Many marriages are becoming marriages of convenience. Marriages of, well, how, how will those who gather when we marry here that we are, we are now apart? So, everybody is just managing to go back. Even Christian marriages, marriages that are conducted in the house of God, becomes troublesome. This is very, very sad. Because as far as the Bible is concerned, it is impossible for two people to hate each other and both of them say they love God. It's not possible. When you are out of love, you are out of Christ. Because love will never ask, what can I get? It will ask, what can I give? That's why the first major quality is that patience. To be financially poor is bad. But to be poor in love is greatly worse. Where love reigns, God must reign there. This is a very, very serious matter. And where love is, love will be silent when the words you should say out will hurt the other party. So you just keep quiet. You say, you know, these words will hurt. So you don't say it. So the first great quality of love is patience. Patience. A woman's fancy went to the war front. And they kept writing each other. They kept writing. After a while, the woman didn't receive any letter from the man again. And she was wondering why the man is not writing. Eventually, somebody else wrote to her. And said, this is from your fiancé. I'm sorry, I don't think we can go ahead with this marriage. So because if you see me now, you want to marry me again. By a copy of this letter, I discharge you and set you free to go and marry somebody else. The lady got the letter she was surprised but she insisted let me go and see him she didn't know that while in the war front they threw a direct bomb where this brother was and both hands were cut off so he had no hands again to even write any letter so this is why somebody wrote for him so this lady came to see him in the hospital and because of that true love of Christ in her heart, she just embraced him. And said, no, if it's because of this hand, I will be your hand. And that is what we call true love. So it's strange these days now. Somebody got married to somebody. And I just come out one day. Say, look here. I married a slim woman. You have become fat. You either get rid of that fat or you get out now. So a man who is saying that, supposing there is no hand now, that will be trouble. God needs to really help us. The way things are going now. The marriage committee, the marriage clinic, all counselors about marriage are busy day and night trying to solve problems about marriage. Whereas the basic thing that has gone out is love. A brother dragged his wife to me and said, I don't want to marry this woman again because she dresses awkwardly. She will wear red upon dark and dark upon blue, blue upon all kinds of terrible combinations. Tell her to go away. My first question to him was that, were you drunk when you brought her to the altar? And they asked you that day, will you take this woman as a wedded wife? Whether she is dressing awkwardly or not? That she's walking straight or crooked. And you open your big mouth. And you said, I will. And you now did a roundabout turn. No. The same First Corinthians 13, verse 4. Charity suffered long. So the first quality of love is patience. The second quality listed there 
and is kind. It's kindness. Kindness is love in action. Are you a kind person? Ask yourself that question. I read the story of that man who has been so kind to people. We were calling him a kind man all over the place. But one day he just woke up. He said, I'm tired of being kind to people. Those who are wicked seem to be making progress. He declared right from that day he wanted to become wicked now. Unfortunately, immediately he made that pronouncement. He died. And that's how a man who has been kind all his life went to hellfire. If you must smear others with mud, remember, you will stain your own fingers first. And it will be a tragedy for somebody to get to the gate of heaven. And you say, I want to enter. I say, no, you can't enter this place because you are a murderer. Say, me? Yeah, I never killed anybody. Say, no, you have hatred in your heart. And the Bible says, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. So all the unkind words, unkind attitudes, unkind letters, is lack of love. Is strange and sometimes very embarrassing. Like even in Mountain of Fire Miracles, we start. At least on two or three occasions now, I've seen people fighting over seat. I see the power of God recognizes where you sit. Even if you stay in this particular auditorium here, facing me now, forever, but you are not ready to receive blessing, it will jump away from you. If you are there, there is no love in your heart. Your coming there is in vain. If somebody could be sitting at the back there, somebody could even be sitting outside. The power of God does not recognize where anybody is sitting. So, it's manifest lack of love when you see people struggling for seat, fighting each other because of seat, and saying unkind words to each other in the place of prayer. It's also an unkind behavior for somebody to come now and then you reserve seats for those who have not even had their bath at home. An unkind attitude. It doesn't show the love of Christ. All these attitudes have to be altered this year. There must be a change. And if you are here and there's somebody you don't greet, somebody you are not in good relationship with, you better run and settle with the person tonight if, you, if it's possible for you to see the person tonight. If not, the person becomes a child of perdition. And you shouldn't allow small things like this to block big miracles coming your way. There is somebody listening to me now who needs to take immediate action. This may have been hindering you for years. This is a strange matter. But it is true. The church I was many years back. We are talking about 1985-84 now. I was doing my counseling. And this woman came in. Everything she had had run down. Houses are down. Vehicles are down. Businesses down. And she came to me. Say, man of God, help me. This is not working. That's not working. That's not working. And I said, let us pray. Immediately we closed our eyes. I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. I said, son, tell this woman that there is somebody she does not wish to forgive. There is somebody that has offended her and she has decided she will never forgive. Tell her to go and forgive the person. If not, I will not answer her prayer. Tell her to go and search with the quarrel. Ah. And I said, Madam, sorry, we cannot pray now. The Lord said, There is somebody you are not like, willing to forgive. Go and forgive the person. She looked at me and started crying. So, no, 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 no. How can I forgive that man? It's not possible. I know the person you are talking about. That's my husband. Can't forgive him. What has he done? When he could, could not afford bedroom slippers, I was a wife. Then he bought bedroom slippers. When he could not afford shoes, I was a wife. He bought shoes. When he was very poor, I married him. Now, now he's very rich. Can you imagine? He now took my housemaid and converted her to a wife. So you say I should forgive that kind of person? If that is the condition for your prayer, I'm going away. And she left. What? No problem. But the next morning, she was the first person to arrive. Say, man of God. I'm ready to forgive now. And you know, immediately she let that go. All the good things that were spoiling started coming back. Kindness. A second characteristic of love. That same verse Paul. Charity envied enough. 
Charity does not commit envy. It doesn't envy. True love does not envy success, gift, talents, and possession of others. It does not. Some cannot sit at the feet of any young Christian to be taught anything. Some say, I can't go to that house fellowship. The person they put there is a small boy. What is he going to tell me? So you sit at home. He has no experience about life. Why is he there? They forgot that Paul came last of the apostles. But look at what God has used him to put down for us now. If I hear you are not happy that God has exalted somebody, then you are, you are envious. If you have true love, you will rejoice with the person who has done well and you will pray for him. When envy is in the heart, it causes great trouble. It brings bitterness to the soul. I was reading a story the other time. The devil asked a demon to go and torment a bishop. And the devil said, use all methods to just harass the bishop and torment the bishop. The demon used carnal desire, didn't work. He used lust against the bishop, he couldn't get him. He tried to make him steal, he did not succeed. So the demon was not saying, ah, nothing is working against this man. The devil now said, okay, no, no problem, let me try. Let me try. The devil now went to the bishop and said, hello bishop. Your younger brother that became a bishop after you has now been promoted to archbishop. And you are still a bishop. Oh, when that bishop had that war, envy filled his soul. What? They promoted him above me. I said, Demon, catch him. All methods fail, but the envy caught him. Unfortunately, envy is normally based on materialism and carnality. I've never heard of anybody who is envious of somebody's goodness, but rather will be envious of position, wealth, talent, which is very sad. When you put crabs in a the basket, they don't need cover. Because one crab will reach up and pull the other one back down. Many church goers are a lot like those crabs. Envy is a terrible feeling. But true love does not envy. Verse 4 again. So charity suffered long, number one. It's kind, number two. It envied none, number three. It vaunted not itself. And it's not puffed up. In a word, he's saying love is humble. Humble. Not boastful. Vanted not itself. It does not show off. Now come to church to show off your clothes. It maintains humility. A person can dress proudly. But love does not make a vain display of itself. You always prefer the other one to yourself. Love is not proud. It does not brag. It is not out for display. Love does not make parade. There are many people parade. Love is never anxious to impress people. Love does not cherish inflated ideas. Love has no high opinion of itself. Love has no pride. Love learns to be very humble. But when you see somebody who is not humble, you are looking at somebody who lacks love. The person with the true love of God, you don't even know who he is when he comes. He comes as others come. Not the kind of person who will just be marching through the crowd, although you know you are late. You are marching majestically through a crowd and you are late. At gatherings, he does not request for very, very special attention. Do you have this humility in your personal life? People who lack humility are always easy to locate when they come to meetings. This is a serious matter. And if we don't address it, it will disturb us. There are some, they cannot greet anybody younger than them. They forgot that Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. And if you are here and you think more highly than yourself than you ought to think, it is lack of love. Verse 5. Love does not behave itself unseemly. That is, love exhibits good manners. It will behave itself well. Love is not the kind of behavior that some people have. You are at a place. Naming ceremony, wedding reception, they are serving food. You go to the first place, you put it under your chair. You go to the second place, you put it under the chair. Whereas there are others who have none. It's unseemly behavior. Bad manners. Love does not behave itself unbecomingly. 
It's never indecent. Never rude. Not ill-mannered. Love has good manners, cautious all the time. Love is polite and very good mannered. Being polite is to do and say the kindest thing in the kindest way. It is sad but it is true that believers are sometimes the rudest to the one we love most. Husband can be very rude to the wife and the wife can be very rude to the husband. Love which involves decency and good manners dictate that you correct or neutralize negative qualities in your life promptly. Point six, he says, seek it not at home. That is, you are not selfish. Seek it not at home, does not insist on his own way. Does not pursue selfish advantage. If you are in this meeting, you claim to be born again, but you cannot help people unless you think of what you can get out of it, then you don't have love, you are a selfish person. True love does not always want to prove that he or she is right alone. True love sacrifices and gives generously. Sometimes some people make suggestions at meetings and those suggestions are rejected. They get so angry because they are selfish. True love does not exploit others. That's what Paul Mises said. Love does not seek its own. Many believers are very selfish. Some are even selfish towards God. And this is very sad. And part of the prophecy for this year, and those who give, they will just be collecting miracles. But those who are very stingy, they are looking for trouble. Point number seven. He said, it's not easily provoked. That is, he has self-control. The quality of self-control. You are not easily provoked, not irritable, not touchy and fretful, not quick to take offense, very mild towards those who offend him. He can absorb much. Love has self-control. Love has the character to make one a master of your own emotions. Baby husbands have something common in their character. They behave like babies most of the time. Baby wives who have their own characteristics in common. They nag and nag and nag and complain and complain and complain and abuse their husbands. This is not love. Baby husbands who turn the wife to a boxing partner. This is not love. We find some people because they lack self-control and because they are easily provoked. Any small correction, any small thing that somebody says, they say, I will leave this church because somebody has said something, I'm leaving. Somebody has said something to someone I don't like, I'm leaving. Love is not easily provoked. And to so many people, impatience is a serious problem. They just cannot stand it if everything does not go their way. Before you decide to become provoked, you should ask questions. This person who behaves like this, why? Is he or she behaving like this in order to harm me? Do I really understand this person? Ask questions. Bow down your heads now. Tell the Lord to help you tonight. Ask Him to help you. Talk to the Lord yourself. Amen. When you begin to question, this person is behaving like this. Why? You may then discover that maybe the person too is troubled. Or is even broke. Or he has bottled up so many things. Then you don't really bother your life too much about that. Then you then try and find out for yourself why you are getting upset too. Love is not easily provoked. I remember the case of a man who could not sleep. The day he learned that his wife has been promoted as a bank manager. He started a screaming match inside the house. I pray that the true love of Christ would dwell in our life mightily in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Character number eight, he says, he thinketh no evil. True love does not harbor evil thoughts against anybody. It's not touchy. And you will hardly notice when things go wrong. Does not keep data, diaries, statistics of wrongs done to him or her in the past. It does not imagine evil. It, it forgives and forgets. True love is never happy when things go wrong for others. A lot of people get happy when something wrong is happening to somebody else. Many sit in church for years, but there is nothing like the love of Christ in their heart. This is why they still fight each other. 
Love does not keep account of what somebody has done wrong. Love refuses to start reacting when somebody is insulted. Point number nine here. So rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice that in the truth. True love never rejoices, rejoices because of wrong things. Is never glad when things go wrong for other people. True love is not happy when he hears that another believer has fallen into sin. He's not happy when this small daughter of a man he does not love has fallen into sin. Love drags you to your knees and wants you to pray for that person. True love looks for the good and not the bad in a person. That's why gossiping is very bad. It is a sin that is difficult to restitute. This is Bible characteristic of love. Ten, he said, bear it all things. Does not collapse under strain or tension. It has a sustaining power. Believe at all things. Always trusting. Does not think or exhibit suspicion. Hope at all things. Is always hopeful. Believing that things will be better. Always expecting the best. It says he endured all things. It endures through time. Never getting fed up. Never getting tired of it all. It said love never fails. It will triumph at the end. Love is one thing that will last no matter what happens to every other thing. It will stand. This is where we are going to stop today. Many of us need to repent. Many of us need to forgive all those who have offended us. Many of us need to ask for special grace. Many of us need to purposely pursue peace. Many of us need to go and apologize where apology is needed. Many need to call up people and say, excuse me, you know, I really, I'm really not free with you. I don't have a good heart towards you, but it's changed now. Please forgive me. That's why the psalmist said, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. Perhaps the meditation of your heart is completely unacceptable. This is a night to talk to the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet now. Rise up on your feet now. And bow down your heads. Talk to God yourself. All the unloving characteristics in the heart. A situation where the enemy is compiling records against us. Those in those that we lack love in our heart. Tell him to forgive you. And to give you a new heart. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Tell the Lord. Anything that will stand in my way of being a candidate of awesome testimonies and divine turn around, no matter how I love it, take it away from me now. And those of you who need to make restitution, make your restitution now. You have time to do so before the Lord. If you are here, you find it very hard to forgive, or you still have bitterness in your heart against anyone, let it go right now. Amen. Now with a very loud voice. A voice that is a cry to heavens for help. Let nobody's voice overshadow your voice as you cry to the heavens now. This is a very serious and sober time with the Lord. And I want you to shout this with boiling voice. With fire in your spirit. Expecting the touch of God upon your life as you do so. Say, Blood of Jesus!